I'm about to do your Sagittarius April 2021 love reading and in this reading we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. Sagittarius, how is it going? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading. Now if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you always get notified anytime I post a new Sagittarius tarot reading for you. Now let's get on with this Sagittarius April 2021 love reading for today because today we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. And I'm going to do that by pulling one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you. Then I'm going to pull three cards for you, Sagittarius, three cards for your person. Then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. Now keep in mind, as always, that this is not a personal reading, this is a general reading, which means I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the way I would if I was doing a personal reading for you. I'm tapping into the collective energy of the group of Sagittarius people that I'm supposed to be getting messages for. Which means that there's no possible way that this reading is going to resonate with literally every Sagittarius person on the whole planet all at the same time. Because I'm not reading for every Sagittarius on the planet. I'm reading for my specific group of Sagittarius people that I'm responsible for getting messages for. Now it's also important to keep in mind in general readings like this that energies can get flipped around backwards from time to time, especially for cross watchers. So if you're not a Sagittarius and you're just watching this reading because you've got the hots for a Saggy, I'm cool with that. Just keep in mind that especially for cross watchers, energies can get flipped around backwards. So you just got to take it as it resonates. Now, regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you still might want to check your moon sign, your rising sign, and your Venus sign videos just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos in the description down below. Now, enough talking. Let's get on with this Sagittarius April 2021 love reading. And let's start by getting one card for what is the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest here in April 2021. Didn't even get the sentence out. Let's get three cards for you, Saggy. What's going on with Sagittarius as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them here in April 2021, please? Let's get three cards for Sagittarius for April 2021. Let's get one more, please. Mm. There it is. Okay. Let's get three cards for your person. What's going on with Sagittarius's romantic person of interest as it relates to Sagittarius and the connection between? Okay, well, looks like we got an extra card for your person. It felt like there was a lot going on trying to get your cards out. The first card was easy. Hmm. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Queen of Swords. This is Libra energy. Now, the Queen of Swords is she who knows the truth. Now, she'll offer to let you speak your truth, but she already knows the truth. So the truth you speak to her, it better match the truth she already knows, or she's going to use that sword to cut you. So this is an energy of cutting off the things. It's speaking the truth, but cutting off things and people that no longer serve you. So that's the overall energy here. Ooh, we have a queen of coins underneath that. So we have two very distinct feminine energies here. The queen of coins is Capricorn energy. This is usually a very grounded, stable, abundant, prosperous, nurturing type of an energy. This is someone who's good at managing the assets and resources of the home, managing the home and the family life. This is who would manage the ten of coins. It's actually who you would build the Ten of Coins around. So this is looking like two different energies here. We got an energy of speaking the truth about something, possibly cutting someone or something off. And then this loving, nurturing, grounded type of an energy here. We have the Five of Cups right underneath that. This is Scorpio energy. This is sadness and remorse about the past. It's about being focused on these 
three cups that have been spilled out, all the love, the emotions that have been spilled out, all the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled out and wasted. This is a card that tells me someone here's focus is in the wrong spot. Because if you're focused on the past, you're going to feel the way you felt in the past. If you're focused on something that you don't have in your life anymore, you're going to feel that loss. If you're focused on something that you think is missing from your life, you're going to feel that gap in your life. So this is about having your focus in the wrong spot. Notice there are two upright full cups right behind this lady, and she's not focused on those. So this is telling me that if your focus stays in the wrong spot, you could have these negative lower vibrational feelings like sadness and remorse, guilt maybe. It's also telling me that you could miss some opportunity that's right there in front of you if you keep your focus in the wrong spot. Now that's the overall energy of the reading here. I'm sure we'll revisit that as we go. The mutual point of interest. Now this is shared energy between the two of you. This is either like you've said or done something and it's got your person thinking, feeling, or acting this way or vice versa. They've said or done something and you're thinking, feeling, acting this way because of it. More often than not though, this is mutual energy that is affecting both of you. You're both probably feeling this energy. One of you has done something and it's got, it's affecting the other one or both of you are feeling this somehow. The mutual energy between you guys is the moon. Now the moon represents fears, worries, anxieties, can even represent something being hidden in the dark. As in like some secret being kept, something that you can't see, something that your person can't see. This is affecting both of you. So let's clarify this moon card. Why is the moon here is the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest here in April 2021? Why is the moon in here, please? Okay. Hmm. Well. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Coins. This is Virgo energy. This is a card of work, as in like putting in the work on something, putting in the time, effort, and energy on something, or being willing to put in the work, the time, effort, and energy on something. Hmm. Man, 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 man. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. Right under this Eight of Coins. We have the Seven of Swords. This is Aquarius energy. This is a card that's got a few different meanings. I'm going to give them all to you. You take it however it resonates for you. Although, because we're seeing this Moon card here right off the bat and some of the other cards that I'm seeing out here I haven't told you about yet, this is not looking so promising. This Seven of Swords, first meaning is trying to get away with something, as in lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind someone's back, being deceptive, being shady, trying to get away with something that they're not supposed to be getting away with. Now, the other meanings to this card, one of them is self-preservation, as in not wanting to be hurt. The whole reason the dude is stealing these swords is because he doesn't want to be hurt by those swords. He doesn't want those swords to be used against him, so he's stealing them as a way to protect himself from being hurt by them. The other meaning for this is leaving something behind. He can only carry five swords, so he's got to leave the other two behind. So it can mean any of those things. We have the nine of swords right underneath that. Typically, swords are not such a good thing to, to be seeing, it, especially in a love reading. We've got a queen of swords as the overall energy. We've got the seven of swords here. And now we've got the Nine of Swords. I'm seeing more swords out here we haven't gotten to yet. The Nine of Swords is also fears, worries, anxieties. It's thinking about something over and over and over again to the point that it's got you stressed out. It's starting to be, you know, something that's to your detriment at this point. This is affecting both of you. It's starting to look like somebody is doing something in the shadows here, as in not not out in the open, trying to have some sort of a secret. They've been putting in work, doing some sneaky stuff. And it's got the other one of you in mental anguish, essentially. We've got judgment right underneath that. This is about passing your own final verdict and judgment on a situation, as in making some sort of a final decision. Now, this can also represent reconciliation energy, because this card is kind of about, like, resurrection. 
bringing something back to life, calling it back from the grave, transforming something in a way that it's not going to be the same again. But that's not what this is about. This is about a decision being made here. This Ace of Swords is the sword of victory. It's the sword of truth. It's the sword of clarity. It's also the sword you would use to make a decision. Like the, the root word for decide or decision, the Latin word that those words come from, literally means to cut off, as in to cut off all other options and be left with only one option. That's how you make a decision. This is the sword you would use to make decisions with. It's also the sword you would use to sever a relationship or to sever something in your life that's not in balance. It's the sword that is wielded by the Queen of Swords, and she's the overall energy. This is an energy of speaking the truth and cutting off things and people that no longer serve you. Got the Three of Cups right under that. This is Cancer Energy. This is sometimes a card of reconciliation. Now, I've got two cards so far. This Judgment and the Three of Cups. That can represent reconciliation energy. I don't feel for a minute that Judgment in this case is about anything other than making some sort of a decision here. This Three of Cups, like I said, can be reconciliation, but it can also represent a third-party love scenario because we've got Three Cups of Love in this picture. The other thing that's making me think that, besides the moon, as in like something being hidden in the dark, something being kept from you, is right off the rip, we've got two queens here, two feminine energies. This can definitely be a sign that there's a third-party scenario going on. And when we get to the clarifiers for this moon card, to clarify that, we have another queen. The Queen of Cups, we have the Two of Wands, and we have the Lovers. Now this Queen of Wands, in addition to being a third queen that we're seeing out here right now, this is, this is either Aries or Leo. Usually Leo, but sometimes this can be Aries energy. This is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined person. Someone who knows exactly what they want. And they go after what they want with bold, passionate, fiery determination. The Queen of Wands is usually someone who's sexy, vivacious, fun to be around, like the life of the party. But she knows what she wants, and she doesn't take no for an answer. She goes after what she wants, and she almost always gets it. Next, we have the Two of Wands, which is Aries energy. Twos in tarot are about decisions. This is... A crossroads it's a fork in the road it's a decision point and it's a decision about which path leads me to the world that I want and which path do I leave behind in order to get there so we've got some decision being made here something being hidden in the dark and the way these cards are laid on the table something's hidden in the dark and there's fears worries and anxieties about this decision I'm getting the strong impression that there's more than one queen involved here We've got somebody putting in work, doing something sneaky that they're trying to get away with, and possibly being afraid that they're going to get caught, afraid of the judgment that's going to take place, afraid of getting cut off. Afraid of getting cut off? We, we definitely, it, it looks to me like we definitely have a third-party scenario. The final card to clarify the moon for the mutual point of interest between the two of you is the lovers. Now, this is... I breathe you in, you breathe me in, we're soulmates. This is a very strong love connection. This is divine feminine, divine masculine energy. These are two people who are probably supposed to be together. But in a love reading, the lovers can also represent needing to make a choice between two lovers or between more than one lover. We've got something hidden in the dark. The center card here in the clarifiers is a decision point. Which path leads me to the world that I want, and which path do I leave behind? We've got a fire sign here, which is probably you. Some decision between lovers right in the middle of that is that decision point. Now that's the mutual point of interest between the two of you here in April 2021, Sagittarius. Your energy is the Ten of Swords, the Two of Cups, and the Four of Coins. Now, the Ten of Swords is Gemini energy. Tens are completions. This is a swift ending to something. 
sometimes a painful ending to something. Sometimes this is an ending that you didn't see coming, hence the sword's coming at the person's back. You don't see that coming when it's coming from behind you. Sometimes this is an ending in betrayal, hence the sword's in the dude's back. He's getting stabbed in the back. No matter how you slice this, this is an ending to something. Possibly a painful ending. Possibly one that you didn't see coming. Tell me more about this Ten of Swords, please. Why is the Ten of Swords here for Sagittarius in April 2021, please? Why is the Ten of Swords here? Hmm. Okay, we're taking an extra card. Hmm. On the bottom of the deck. King of Swords. Gemini Energy. Again, we're clarifying a card that's Gemini Energy. This Lovers is Gemini Energy. Now we've got another Gemini Energy out here. Overall energy of the reading is the Queen of Swords. Now we've got counterparts out here. Usually in a love reading, if you get the King and the Queen of the same suit, that usually represents a power couple. It usually represents two cards that are supposed to be together, two people who are probably supposed to be together. When you get the King and the Queen of Swords, at least for me, this usually represents two people who used to be together that aren't together anymore. Or may not be together after this is over with. We've got the Ten of Swords, an ending to something. The King of Swords is a decision-making type of an energy. We've got this decision here about something hidden in the dark, a decision about which path leads me to the world that I want. Do I go with the the fire sign energy. Do I pick a different lover? Who am I cutting off? We've got a queen of coins underneath here. Some sadness and remorse about the past. This is a decision-making energy. It's also someone who's very smart, very analytical, very logical, usually a very fair person. This is someone, though, who is emotionally detached. They don't consult their emotions when they make their decisions. They're only interested in what they can see right in front of them. They're only interested in the truth and the facts of the matter. And the King of Swords is going to use the truth and the facts of the matter to make the best, most logical, most rational, most fair decision available for everyone involved. Five of Swords. Again, swords are not really a great sign in a love reading. The Five of Swords is definitely not. This is Aquarius energy. This Fives are about conflict. So swords are about thoughts or communication. So this is either a conflict in the thinking or a conflict in communications. As in like someone's having negative thoughts about... Maybe you're having negative thoughts about yourself, about your person, about the connection. This can be conflict in communications as in bickering fighting arguing using words as weapons using tongues like swords this can even be an energy of like a winning at all cost type mentality as in like i'm gonna get what i want and i don't really care what happens to you as long as i get what i want that's all that matters to me this represents a painful situation around some sort of a conflict here We have another five right under that, the five of coins. This is a card of abandonment. This is about being cast aside. This is about being left out in the cold, possibly feeling like you're not good enough. This is a breakup card. Again, the second five in a row, and we're clarifying a ten. Five plus five is ten. We've got the ten of swords, a swift painful ending, possibly an ending in betrayal. This five of swords can oftentimes represent a betrayal. <clears throat> to clarify this ten of swords, we got yet another five. The five of cups, the two of cups, the nine of wands, and the sun. Now this five of cups is Scorpio energy. Again, we've already seen this card Right under this king, queen of swords and the queen of coins, we've got the five of cups here in the overall energy of the reading. That sadness and remorse about the past. Well, here it is showing up again. Sadness and remorse. It's about focusing on the three cups that have been spilled. All the love and emotions that have been spilled. All the time, effort, and energy that's been wasted. We just saw a three of cups in the story on the bottom of the deck when I clarified the moon with something being hidden in the dark. The three cups are spilled out right now. But 
there are still two upright full cups in the background, which is telling me that there is still a connection between the two of you in the background here. There's still love in the background here. But there's some sadness and remorse about this ending that's happening, about the betrayal that's happening. Next, we have the Two of Cups. Cancer energy. This is, I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected, but it's a two. And in Tarot, twos represent needing to make a choice. We've got the Two of Wands out here, a fork in the road, a decision point about which path leads me to the world I want. This is a decision about this love connection. Next, we have the Nine of Wands, which is Sagittarius energy. This is an energy of being walled off and defensive. Now, it's also an energy of healing. This is the wounded warrior, and he's built this wall around himself as a way to protect himself because he's been hurt, and he doesn't want to be hurt again. He's trying to heal. He's trying to get his energy right so he can make the next step in his journey. So he's built this wall around himself as a way to protect himself, as a way to heal. Next, we have the sun. This is Leo energy. This is usually the happiest card in the whole tarot deck. It's happiness, joy, abundance, bliss, harmony. It's hard to get a better card than the sun when that's what it means. When we're clarifying the Ten of Swords with all this heartbreak and sadness and betrayal and these choices and stuff being hidden in the dark, that's not what this card means anymore. Now what it means is illumination, as in the light being shined on something, something that was hidden in the dark is having the light shined on it. It's being illuminated. It's being lit up so that it can be seen for what it is. Man, the next card in your energy is the Two of Cups, which we just saw in the clarifiers here. Again, this is Cancer energy. This represents a choice, a decision needing to be made about this love connection. Tell me more about this Two of Cups for Sagittarius in April 2021, please. Why is the Two of Cups here? Bottom of the deck, Nine of Swords. Again, second time we've seen this. This is Gemini energy. This is fears, worries, anxieties thinking about something over and over and over again to the point that it's to your detriment. You're stressing yourself out by thinking about it. This can cause like sleepless nights, having difficulty going to sleep, difficulty staying asleep, nightmares. This is usually not a good energy. This, this is mental anguish is what this is over this decision in this love connection. Right under that nine of swords, we have death, Scorpio energy. This is, this is an ending to something. This is something dying so that it can be reborn again in a new, more beautiful way. This is some sort of a transformation process, usually not a pleasant one. Usually it's a painful transformation process. If you think about like when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, it goes into a cocoon. It's not having a party in there. It's not fun and games for the caterpillar because it's actually dying. And it's transforming into something entirely different. When it comes out of that cocoon, it ain't a caterpillar anymore. It's a butterfly. And yes, it's more beautiful, but that was a painful transformation process. So this represents some sort of a painful transformation process you are going through as it relates to this connection. Fears, worries, and anxieties about it. To clarify this Two of Cups, we have the Nine of Coins. The Chariot, the Three of Wands, and the King of Coins. Now this Nine of Coins is Virgo energy. This is, this is the singles card. This is with you, without you, in spite of you. I'm single, I'm abundant, I'm prosperous, all in my own right. I'm self-sufficient. I don't need anyone to take care of me in this physical 3D reality because I got this in the bag. I, I got this all on my own. This is about, we saw that eight of coins earlier, putting in the work. This is about reaping the rewards of your work, reaping the fruits of your labor. 
This is someone, this, this is telling me that you're okay on your own in this physical 3D world. You don't need a love connection in order to be physically okay. Next, we have Cancer Energy with the Chariot. This is the fastest moving energy in the whole tarot deck. This is about using the will to move forward very quickly in success and victory. I mean, if you're if you're this stable and abundant, totally possible that's what this is what this represents. This is about using the will to move forward past any problems or challenges or obstacles from your past. Getting past all that very quickly into success and victory. Then we have the Three of Wands. This is Aries energy. <clears throat> this is about being at the beginning stages of manifesting something. It, in this Two of Wands, this is that fork in the road, that decision point about which path leads me to the world that I want and which path do I leave behind. In the Three of Wands, you've already made that decision. You've already chosen the path that leads you to the world you want and you've already started taking steps down that path. You're actively trying to manifest what it is you want. And you have this positive expectancy that based on the path you've chosen, something good is going to come out of that. It just hasn't materialized yet. It hasn't like presented itself in this physical 3D reality that we live in just yet. You're still waiting on it to appear. You're waiting on your ships to come in, so to speak. So this is an energy of you waiting on something, but having this positive expectancy that something good is going to happen. And we have the King of Coins. This is more Virgo energy. This usually represents a masculine energy. This is someone who's very stable, very abundant, very prosperous, good at managing assets and resources, good at building empires. A lot of times this can represent someone who is involved in a business, as in like they own their own business or they run a business. They're in like a managerial role in a business, having some sort of authority in that. This is someone who's good at building stuff, building empires. This is who would build the Ten of Coins. Now, in the overall energy of the reading, we saw that Queen of Swords, and right under it, we saw the Queen of Coins. These are two cards that represent counterparts, like two people who are probably supposed to be together. This would be a power couple here. This is who builds and manages the Ten of Coins, that maximum stability, that maximum abundance and prosperity that we all want this is who builds that i'm feeling like you guys had that at some point and that's what this sadness and remorse i just got goosebumps down my left arm that's probably what this sadness and remorse about the past is about you guys had this at one time and it's been severed you're still okay financially stability wise on your own and you're trying to move forward in success and victory very quickly here you're just waiting on something to happen probably regarding this person that you're connected to here worrying about it because there is a transformation taking place oh okay knight of coins is right under that this is the slowest moving night in the deck. So see, here we are with you trying to go really, really fast, but you're waiting. The Knight of Coins is the slowest night in the deck. This is a slow forward moving energy, like slow, methodical, one foot in front of the other, not being in a big hurry, not being in a rush. Like slow and steady wins the race. Like in that story, the tortoise and the hare, this ain't the hare, this is the tortoise. And you're wanting to be in that hair energy that's super fast energy the bad thing about the knight of coins is that he takes a long time to get there he's slow and a lot of times like from your perspective it might seem like progress isn't happening the way you want it to this thing that you're waiting on it might seem like it's not actually coming but progress is happening it's just slow now the good thing about the knight of coins is that he doesn't hurry he doesn't rush. He doesn't mess everything up because he's in a hurry and he's rushing through it. He doesn't screw it all up because of that. When he finally shows up, he's got the real deal. He's carrying the ace of coins. Stability, like the seed that has the potential to grow into that ten of coins that we want. So when he finally shows up, he's got the real deal. It's just not happening very quickly here. Right under that, we've got that eight of coins, that putting in the work on something. And then that Seven of Swords again. Either that sneaky behavior 
lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind backs, being deceptive, or this is an energy of self-preservation, you not wanting to be hurt, or this can be even be an energy of you leaving something behind. We've got that Ten of Swords, an ending to something. We've got sadness and remorse about the past, you being walled off. Two cards that are a decision for you about this love connection and the mutual energy. We've got a decision about this love connection, something being hidden in the dark, a lot of fears, worries, and anxieties. I've seen that's what this card means in addition to being something hidden in the dark. We've seen that Nine of Swords twice. Fears, worries, and anxieties. I've got the three of coins underneath this. This is in the standard Rider Weight tarot deck. This has three people on the card working together. And this card usually represents working together. It's like, it's like teamwork and collaboration. Working together is equals to build something of value, to build something great. You would be building the ten of coins here, which is what the king and the queen of coins do. They build the ten of coins. They manage the ten of coins. But in this deck, there's not three people on the card. There's only one. This is not working together is equals to build something. This is one person working all by themselves to build something. Scorpio energy with the six of cups next. Man, the six of cups is the card of the past. It's Thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past, thinking about the good old days, the way it used to be. This card can even represent someone from the past making a comeback. And then we've got more Cancer energy again with that Three of Cups. This can be reconciliation energy, like I said at the beginning. It can also represent a third party love scenario because there's Three Cups of Love in this picture. You've got the Ace and Judgment coming out again. This is some sort of a decision being made here. This could be the truth coming out and then a judgment taking place. Some decision happening. Man, 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 man. No matter what, you have a lot of fears, worries, anxieties, and something is transforming here. Now the final card in your energy for April 2021, Sagittarius, is the Four of Coins. Capricorn energy. This is an energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it. Tell me more about this Four of Coins for Sagittarius, please. Why? These messages must must be important. They don't they're not even letting me finish my sentence before they're jumping out. Bottom of the deck, the Five of Swords again, Aquarius energy. Fives are conflict. This is either a conflict in your thinking, which I don't really see anything out here that leads me to believe you're having any conflict in your thinking. This is this is a painful situation. This is probably an argument. Bitter words. Words as weapons. Tongues like swords. Five of coins right under that again. So we're having a lot of fives. Fives are conflict and change. This is about being cast aside, being abandoned, being left out in the cold. This is a breakup. Some painful situation that led to a breakup. A breakup of the Ten of Coins. Like I said, we saw the King and the Queen of Coins. They're who build the Ten of Coins. You're down to the Nine of Coins now. You used to be at the Ten with this person. I got goosebumps so bad. It's ridiculous. Under that is the world. This is the final card of the Major Arcana. This represents the completion of a cycle. This is the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. One where it's going to require this Four of Swords energy. This is Libra energy. This is taking a pause, taking a rest, taking a break. Choosing to go internal to do some healing, to do some thinking about something, trying to figure out what to do moving forward from here. Again, in the mutual energy between the two of you, a fork in the road, a decision point about which path do I go down, which path do I leave behind. To clarify this four of coins, this energy of holding on tightly and not wanting to let go, we have the high priestess, 
the hanged man, and the seven of wands. Now the high priestess, this is she who knows. This is card two of the major arcana. So she rules over all the other twos in the deck. She rules over this fork in the road decision point of the two of wands. She rules over these two of cups cards here. This decision about this love connection. She, she is, she sits in front of the veil of consciousness. So she has access to all the information that you and I as humans don't have access to. She can go back and forth behind the curtain anytime she wants. She always has her eyes closed. She doesn't need her eyes to see what's going on. She just knows. Now, the bad thing about her is she doesn't always fill us in on what she knows. Sometimes there's stuff that we're not meant to know. Sometimes there's stuff that we don't need to know until we need to know it. Divine timing type thing. So sometimes she can represent secrets or something that you don't know about. When I've got the moon and the high priestess in the same reading, this is definitely telling me there's something that you don't know about or something that you didn't know about. You, you didn't have, like, you didn't see it. You just had, like, intuitive hits about it, gut feelings about it, saw signs, synchronicities, had dreams with messages in them, things like that. This is, this is how she communicates to you, through your intuition. Now, in a love reading, this can also represent, like, a connection that's deeper than just something physical, deeper than just something emotional. It could represent... A bordering on like a spiritual type of a connection. It could represent divine guidance. Man. Next we have the hanged man. This is Pisces energy. This is about progress being halted. There is no forward movement in this connection right now. Things are stagnant. Now the hanged man is hanging upside down because he's looking at things from different perspectives than he would normally look at things from different points of view different angles and he's doing that trying to gain enlightenment on something he's trying to figure out what to do moving forward from here like you don't want to let go of this connection but intuitively it almost feels like that you know you have to you know you have to we got she who knows and she who knows the truth it's about cutting off things that don't serve you. I know that this doesn't serve you. This doesn't serve you. There was a painful situation. I feel like you probably didn't have... You know, it's not like you had the dude on videotape doing all the sneaking around. You didn't have photographs of it. Or, it doesn't have to be a dude. It could be a chick, too. But intuitively, you knew something was wrong. And progress is halted now. Then we have the Seven of Wands. This is Leo energy. This is, Wands are about passion and desire. This is a card about being walled off and defensive again. So that's the second time in your energy I'm seeing this being walled off and defensive. This is an energy of like defending your position on something, defending your stance on something, or being willing to fight for what it is that you desire, fight for what it is that you want, fight for what you believe in. Now, now you're starting to look a little bit torn on it. Now, that's your energy here in April 2021, Sagittarius. Let's take a look at your person's energy. Because they got a bonus card in their energy. They got the Five of Wands, the King of Swords, the Fool, and Justice. Now this five of wands is Leo energy. This, again, with the fives, the conflict. This is a conflict in your person's desires, an internal conflict. They're pulling themselves in multiple different directions at the same time. A piece of them wants this one thing, a piece of them wants this other thing, and they're having like an internal tug of war with themselves about what it is they actually want. When we look at the mutual energy between the two of you, there's fears, worries, and anxieties, and something hidden in the dark. There's this Queen of Wands, a fire sign energy. There's this Lovers, possible Gemini, possible other love connection. And right smack dab in the middle of that is this Two of Wands, a decision point about which of these two do I want. 
I've got two queens right off the rip in this reading. Sadness and remorse, possible guilt about something here. And your person is internally conflicted about all of this. Let me scoot this over some here. Tell me more about this Five of Wands. What is the Five of Wands here? The Sagittarius is person of interest in April 2021, please. Really? Hmm. Mm. That reminds me. I've been getting a lot of people asking me, where can you get the coffee mugs? Where can you get some of the t-shirts you see me wearing? They're all available on my store. I've got that on my website. It's finally finished now. Well, it's finished as it's getting right now. I'm always adding new stuff to it, but I'm actually giving away free coffee mugs and free t-shirts there. So if you go to www.unknowntruthtarot.com forward slash free hyphen stuff, you can enter for a chance to win free cups and free t-shirts. You can even check out the store while you're there, but let's get back to this reading here because on the bottom of the deck we have the three of coins capricorn energy second time we've seen this card we're clarifying this five of wands internal conflict now we've got an energy that's usually teamwork and collaboration where you're working together is equals to build something great like the ten of coins but again we've got one person on this card not working together working for themselves Seven of Swords, Aquarius Energy, trying to get away with something. They're internally conflicted. They're working for what's best for themselves. They're trying to get away with something. They're lying. They're cheating. They're stealing. They're, they're doing something deceptive, sneaking around behind your back, trying to get away with something. To clarify this Five of Wands internal conflict, we have the Six of Wands, the Page of Swords, in the five of wands again now, the six of wands is leo energy this is a card of recognition as in either your person being recognized for something or your person having some sort of a recognition themselves like about themselves about you about this situation that you guys are involved in some sort of a recognition happening here now another meaning for this card is moving forward in success and victory they're like internally conflicted about how to move forward in success and victory. They're used to working together with you and now they're not working together with you. It looks like you have potentially cut them off. That could be why progress is halted here. That could be what this you being defensive was about. No matter what, I feel like something got illuminated. It came out that they were... Being deceptive and sneaky and doing stuff they shouldn't have been doing. Next card in there in the clarifiers for this Five of Wands, this internal conflict we have is the Page of Swords. Pages are messengers. So this is news and messages. This is communication. This can even be an energy of spying on someone, like keeping tabs on someone, trying to figure them out, like asking people about them or driving past their house or where they work, doing some snooping around, trying to figure someone out. Now, this could be some other third person involved here that saw them do something, and then they came and told you. That could be how things got illuminated here. Hmm. Man. Final card to clarify the Five of Wands. The Five of Wands, internal conflict, Leo energy. Anytime I'm clarifying a card and I get that same card as the clarifier, that's the universe going, dude, I done told you. There's a conflict, a conflict in their desires, an internal conflict here. This is just the universe beating me over the head with it to make sure I understand so I can relay that to you. Next card in your person's energy for April 2021 is the King of Swords. Again, second time we've seen that. Second time I've seen this counterparts of the King and Queen of Swords here. Gemini energy. Someone who's interested only in the truth and the facts, only in what they can see right in front of them. They don't care about the emotions involved. They don't care about the story behind what's going on. 
they're only interested in what they can see right in front of them. When I have these two as counterparts, this doesn't usually represent a power couple for me. This usually represents two people who used to be together. Tell me more about this King of Swords for Sagittarius' person here in April 2021, please. Why is the King of Swords here? Let's get two more on this King of Swords, please. Thank you. Bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Coins, Virgo Energy. This is, again, about putting in the work on something, putting in the time effort and energy on something on some sort of a decision here this is a chief decision maker type of an energy someone who's emotionally detached like i said they don't care about the emotions they don't care about the story behind what's going on this is about being logical and rational and looking at what's right in front of them and not letting their emotions get involved in any way in their decision making they're putting in the work probably on making this decision we've got that Two of Wands, that fork in the road, decision point about which of the lovers do I choose here. Putting in the work, and they're doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for the both of you. They're doing it for themselves. You can't make this shit up. Seven of Swords. Again, lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind your back, deceptive behavior. clarify this king of swords we got the world we got death we got the two of swords we got so many swords out here it's sick it's it's not a good sign this world card again is the final card in the major arcana it's it represents the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle the very next card we have is death Scorpio energy. This is an ending to something. This is the very first card out in your energy. The first card out in each of your energies is the most important card. The first card out for you is an ending to something. A swift, probably painful ending. The first card out for them is internal conflict about some decision they're trying to make here. We've got an ending. Something dying so that it can be reborn again in a new way. Some painful transformation process. An ending of a cycle, a transformation process. Then we have the Two of Swords. This is Libra energy. Again with the Twos. Twos are decisions. This represents a decision that your person needs to make. Only they haven't made the decision yet. Either because they feel like they don't have enough information to make the decision. Or there's something that they can't see. Hence that blindfold. Or there's something that they do know about, they just don't want to see it. They don't want to look at it, almost like they're in denial about something. So that's preventing them from making the decision. No matter what, this is a decision they need to make, and they're not making it. Next card in your person's energy is the Fool. This is the first card of the Major Arcana. So again, like I said, we have the ending of one cycle... And the beginning of a new cycle. This is card 21 of the Major Arcana. Last card. This is card 0 of the Major Arcana. That 0 represents absolutely nothing and the potential for everything all at the same time. This is a new beginning in something. This is about taking that leap of faith. Not needing to know what all the steps are from beginning to end before they take that first step. Not needing to know what the outcome is going to be before they take that first step. It's about just having that blind faith to say, screw it, I'm going to do it, and leap off the cliff and figure out how to grow my wings on the way down. Figure out how to work this as I go along. Now this can also be an energy of risk-taking. Taking risks outside of the connection. We've seen that Seven of Swords at least two or three times now. Tell me more about the Fool for Sagittarius' person of interest in April 2021, please. Why is the Fool here? Let's get two more on the Fool, please. Jesus. Bottom of the deck. 
Three of coins, Capricorn energy. Again, this usually is teamwork and collaboration, but in this deck, there's only one person on this card. He's working for himself. Your person took a leap of faith for himself. They took risks outside of this connection based on what he could gain out of that. Had nothing to do with working together as equals. It had nothing to do with that ten of coins. It had nothing to do with you guys being this, this power couple that builds and manages the ten of coins. It, that stable, abundant home life. It had nothing to do with that. It was all about just themselves. To clarify the fool, we got the Emperor, the Seven of Swords, again, and the Page of Wands. Damn. The Emperor is Aries energy. This is an energy of taking control of the situation, taking charge of the situation, possibly setting some boundaries. The Emperor knows what he wants. And he's going after what he wants. He's, he's like a master manifester. He's got all the tools, all the resources. He's got everything he needs to put together a plan to get what he wants and then to execute that plan to get what he wants. Now, on the surface, that sounds great. But sometimes the emperor can be this overbearing type of an energy where it doesn't matter what you want. Only thing that matters is what he wants. And he's going to get it. And there's no chance you have of stopping him from getting it. Took the leap somewhere else. Seven of Swords. We've already talked about this repeatedly. Lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind backs, deception, trying to get away with something. Page of Wands. Wands are about passion, desire. Pages are messengers. So this is news and messages of passion and desire. This is also... The Minor Arcana version of this Fool card. This is about taking the very first steps down a brand new path towards something that this person has a lot of passion and desire for. Look, in the center of the mutual energy between you, the decision point. Which path leads me to the world I want? Which path do I leave behind? The way that these cards are laid on the table, the past is always on your left. The future is always on your right. In the past, we have the fire sign feminine energy, then the decision, then going off to a new lover. And this is about taking the first steps down the new path. The old path is what led to you. The new path is what led to that. They took a risk outside of the connection, going after what they wanted. They lied. They snuck around behind your back. They were deceptive. That's what was hidden in the dark from you. Final card in your person's energy here in April 2021, Sagittarius, Justice. This is Libra energy. This is a card of balance. This is about doing the right thing, the fair thing, the just thing. The sword in this card is the same sword that's being held by the Queen of Swords. In this card, it's for severing things that aren't in balance, so balance can be restored and the right, fair, just thing can happen. Sometimes, though, this tells me that something unfair was taking place, and now it's time to pay for that. There's some justice being served out. So tell me more about justice for Sagi's person here in April 2021. Why is justice here, please? I said, yep, bottom of the deck, Ten of Swords, Gemini Energy. This is a swift, painful ending to something. This is an ending that maybe they didn't see coming this time. This is an ending possibly in betrayal for them. This is some painful ending. Something came to an end for them. Justice was served up. This could definitely be their karma Coming back to bite them in the ass here. This could be whoever this was that they were sneaking around with. We got these two other energies. It's possible they were sneaking around with two other people that weren't you. I don't know for sure. But it looks like something came to an end on that. 
Oh, we got a, a Pisces energy here, the King of Cups. So your person's showing up as the King of Swords here this whole time. Now we've got a King of Cups in the picture here. We're clarifying justice being served. We're clarifying... First card is the Ten of Swords. First card in your energy. Ten of Swords. An ending here. Now we've got... Oh, yeah, yeah. That, mm hmm We've got a King of Cups. This is Pisces energy. And we've got the King of Swords again. So, yeah, this is telling me that what goes around comes around. And now the, the person that they chose, when they chose which path leads me to the world I want, the person they chose also has someone else on the side, too. And it caused a painful situation for your person. Mm -hmm. This is this is like a painful situation. This this could be like betrayal for them. To clarify this justice card, we got the tower. We got the seven of coins, and we got strength. Mm -hmm. The tower, this is when everything comes crashing down. This is when it all falls apart. This is the lightning bolt coming down from the universe, striking the tower, knocking it all down. This is your person getting what's coming to them. This is their karma. Next, we got the seven of coins. This is a period of them having to pause and reflect and take stock of this whole mess that they've created. And they're looking at the seeds that y'all planted together, trying to decide, is this going to, is this going to grow into the 10 of coins that I really want? Is this, is this something I can reinvest in? Is this something I can continue to invest in and put my time, effort, and energy into? Or is this not going to pan out? Maybe it's time for me to just cut my losses and move on. This is the period of time after this tower, after their justice got served to them, where now they're contemplating all these type things, trying to figure out, can I come back or, or am I just out on my ass now? Have I run into the Queen of Swords and now I'm cut completely off because I've got this, this ending here, this tower moment here. That's my justice. Final card to clarify justice is strength. This is Leo energy. This tells me that they went through or are going through a very hard situation. A situation that's going to require a lot of internal strength on their part. They're going to have to have a lot of courage to face their fears. They're going to have to dig down deep and summon that inner courage, summon that inner strength in order to make it through this difficult situation. I think they got what's coming to them. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.